here's a close up of what we're going to try. So, like I said, it's 100% epoxy. I think it came out stellar. It's rock hard. And we'll see how it performs. Stay tuned. What's up, guys? Ziggy here with Foutech Unlimited, and today is going to be an interesting day because I'm trying this new mold. And like I said in the previous video, if it works good, then I'm going to offer it on my website. Uh, this one in particular is 940 357 sig double stack. I also have up to 45 ACP single stack and then 45 10 millimeter double stack. So if this works, I will create molds for all three of them and then offer them up and uh, go from there. But I went ahead and I already purchased the magazine that I needed, which is a Walther P99. And I have the Walther P99 here. We're going to do a sidecar. So I figured it'd be perfect to test this in the press. And I have a feeling it's going to work pretty good, so we shall see. And then, obviously, the magazine that we need to do it. Now, when I form these, I form these on the Glock magazines. The Glock magazines are pretty much the widest on the market because it's a, a steel skeleton with the plastic wrapped around it. So I always form them on those. So this is the widest it's going to be for 940 and 357 SIG. And because of the MRD, it's going to uh, fill up the rest of the space. So let's get going. I'm excited. Let's try. Bah. Let's get ready to rumble. All right. Now, uh, sidecars start off as basic IWBs. So go ahead and get your blocking and everything. I shaved off the controls because so I will be adding this in later on. But first, let's get this going. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add the layers on top. Peel this up, put this guy down. That is to help the blocking here so it doesn't rotate down and then slide because that's just a pain in the butt when you have to do something. And there have been times where I've had to re-block something two or three times because it kept moving. But you can also use hot glue if you want. I pretty much use that when I absolutely can't do it. And I'll tell you, it works. But this is why I like using molds instead of the real steel. Because I could cut and add and drill and do whatever I want to them. So, let's get this going. Should be good right there. Lock that in place. When I do this, I'm going to leave a good enough gap so that it has something to lock into, which is right there. And again, if you're using somebody else's flashlight, I highly recommend um, wrapping their flashlight in tape, only because if you use metal blocking like I do, you will scratch it. Now, I buy my own flashlights, so you can see I got a whole stack of them and I do that so I don't have to borrow anybody else's flashlight so I like to do everything in-house which I just got a new sublimation printer so hopefully that goes well um, now we'll put this blocking in we know it only goes to there we'll extend it a little bit see what looks better we'll go like that even though you're not gonna really see it this parts against the body was this right hand or left hand? This is a right hand. All right. Okay, this side's done. Whoop! Turn it around. And then go ahead and block that side. You want to line up your plates. Make sure they're good. Before that, we're going to throw this down. Lined up. I'll tape the 
send down to the flashlight. And take a single piece and go all the way around like so. All right, now uh, this is going to be uh, G-code J-hooks and a um, Raven concealment claw. Now, there's one of two ways you can do this, and this is why I'm going to do it the way I'm going to do it. But I'm going to show you both. You have two options. This is a light bearing claw, which will go right here, and then this will go right on top. But if you look, that right there is already going to be pretty thick, so you can use the non-light bearing and drop it down. So you're not going to be as wide, but when you get a thinner profile holster, you're going to get longer. So with this here and this here, where it looks like we're going to be just about an inch longer um, to the side, which I'd rather have it longer than fatter. Because the, the fatter it is, the, the more uncomfortable it's going to be. So this will be bolted right to it, and that will be sitting right there. Remember, give yourself plenty of room for a purchase. Right there, and then this is going to be over here, and then of course our new block that we're going to try, and we're going to get this right here. And now you got to remember MRD out. So the way we used to do this is I have this block right here, it's taped to the magazine, and then it's taped right here. Well, we no longer need to do this, like so, and that's going to give us that gap. So we don't need to do that. But what we can do is literally just use a piece of tape and let the tape be the part that attaches it and just pretty much go from there. So you want to attach it where you want. I could probably still use this as a spacer. Now remind you, this is my first time doing this too. I usually, like I said, will take the magazine, put it to it, and then go just like that. And I usually like to put the magazine even with it, but sometimes that's just not possible. So we're gonna go probably up a little bit more, right about that. And we'll, obviously this is going to be the end of it. So we're going to try and lock it in place right about there. So we'll put that there, drop that straight down, and then that's going to be our placement. So from this point, I'm going to just go ahead and just throw some tape across there. Um, but what I'm going to do is, let's see here, I'll take the wider stuff. Throw that there. Get it right there in the middle. Same thing over here. There we go. And we're going to plop that wherever you want it. Which looks like it's going to be right about there. And it's going to be just like that. Now, the cool part about this is since we are extending out this about an inch, this, if you look, is actually in about a quarter inch later. So you could go as close to it as humanly possible. Uh, this isn't saying this is MRD compatible, and it, I don't believe the P99 is available with an MRD. Uh, so we're going to stick this right here. So that'll put just like that. Now, when we get it down in there, technically you don't even have to do that, but that'll that'll guarantee you that it's not going to move type deal. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it without it. So you could do that either way, but I am going to trust myself and at least try this process without anything there. And we'll plop it and then go ahead and bend it and see how it turns out. And there's no need to do anything to this. So I'm going to go ahead. This is going to be olive drab. When I do um, colored, I usually do the back is black. The part towards the body is black. And then the part that you see is going to be the, um, the color. I do this because, one, I laser the back of it so you see what it is. But uh, it's more cost effective to do uh, black backing and then colored front. So I'm going to cut those pieces. Um, oh, we also need to do a... 
retention plate. So let me get a uh, piece of wood and we'll go ahead and cut that. Quarter inch MDF, this is what I use for everything. I even use it for blocking. You actually see here's the barcode from Home Depot. Quarter inch, two foot by four foot MDF, part number 354-221. And you can get it at your local Home Depot. This is what I use and this is what I will continue to use. The only thing I gotta say is make sure, don't use the part with the, the sticker on it with the barcode because it's just a pain in the butt. Because it'll, it'll, the ink will transfer to your Kydex or it gets stuck on it and then it's just a pain in the butt. All right, we'll go ahead and trace the outline. Cut it down here, cut it to here. And this is a P99 PL Mini 2. Oh, another thing, if you notice, I didn't show you prior, the flashlight isn't all the way back against the trigger guard. It is actually forward one click. You can go two clicks if you want. The reason why we're doing this is it will actually give you some adjustment in the holster because it's going to be blocked for the body. So if it's all the way back, the customer the customer won't be able to uh, insert their firearm if this is, um, you know, if you have it in a different spot. So this is always going to be in the same spot. This can go either way, but if you do it all the way back and they have it forward, it's not going to fit. So if you take this and move it a click or two forward, they still have um, that adjustment in there. So, and that's how I do it. So I, right here, I did it flush with it. So I'm going to go ahead, cut the straight lines on my band saw whoop, and this on my scroll saw. It's a potty in the house. All right, that's all up. We're going to go ahead, lock that in place. And you know how I do it. Take my medium tape, stand it up on its end, center it on the trigger guard and center it on the muzzle, and then go ahead and tape it down to at least lock that in place. And then I'll use my dad bod and lock that in place this way. At which point, we'll take the thickest that I have and go across, flip it over and do the same thing. And then I'll stand it up and then just work it, work it across and then we'll put it down in. Reason why I'm doing this is because the Kydex can actually fold underneath and by putting the tape there, it will not allow that. All right. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one end, place the other end, and pretty much just eyeball it when it's down there, and then we'll see how well it goes. Because we won't need uh, we won't need anything past this point because we're actually going to so we'll save some width there, and it'll come down, uh, and then we'll have this here. Where's my other one? Oh, here it is. This here, and we'll have this here. Uh, with a stand on it, so these should be the same height. And then they'll have a curve here, which will be a lot easier to curve this, and we don't have to worry about anything else. So I am looking forward to this. We're going to have a rivet here as well, because we'll definitely need it. So let's get this going. I will cut some OD green and some black, throw it in the oven. I got brand new foam. Now let's talk about the foam real quick. If you notice, grab both sides. If you notice, one is darker than the other. Move this one is darker than the other. So if you take your foam and you look at it perpendicular this way, you will see that there is like a layer, a darker layer on this side. That is the side that you use against the Kydex. This side will not. It, it, you can do it. I have done it. But if you go too hot too quick and then you go to foam, this will actually get caught in the uh, pores of the Kydex and then you'll pour or you'll pull it off and it will stay stuck in the holster, then you need to scrap the holster. So use the side that has the layer on it. Uh, some people use the black extreme foam. I don't like it. This is the foam I use. I absolutely love this foam, and this is the only foam I will only use. So uh, it's $12 a square foot, something like that, through knife kits. Highly recommended, and I absolutely love this stuff. So again, I will cut black, I will cut green, big enough to fit about here and that they'll both go in the oven and then uh, go from there. Now we wait. All right. I'm happy with that. 
enough room for a rivet. And we'll line everything up. Ooh. Oh yeah, work it, work it. Ooh. Oh, baby got back. All right, I like it. I will like it a lot. Let's get uh, pretty much everything settled now of where we need to cut, what we need to do, and go from there. So, boom. All right, let's figure out where this is gonna go. So like I said, we want a good purchase. So it looks like right about there is gonna be the winner. Go ahead, mark that. Yep, okay. And then I trace, trace around it. This way, and we know we need to be straight across for that other one. And instead of rivets, we're going to be going down this way, and we'll we'll make it so it's it's uh, good on there. So we got this here. We know. Let's see here. Should look good right about there. Just like that. Spacing on these, so I went ahead and I got my spacer, and the spacer will tell us where we need to drill. Right there. That looks even. I like it. All right, so we know we're gonna have to go up here and then straight up. So we'll probably put another rivet right there. Keep that there. And then there's going to have to be a rivet, let's say probably right there because we'll come down and then go over and then up since this is going to be a uh, light bearing or armor. All right. So let's drill those. That's going to be quarter inch. Maybe a good idea to throw some clamps on it so it doesn't move because it will separate. And you know me, we'll drill that one last. Let's clean our holes. All right. Take all this out. This not cracked, not bent. <laughs> hey, yeah. All right, so <clears throat> let's clean this up. Rivet these together. And you don't need all the pressure in the world. This is a two-ton arbor press, so just a little bit of pressure sends it. So, here we go. Let's see what else we need to do. Alright, and like I stated before, I'm going to go ahead and move this all the way back now. Because I guarantee that's where the customer has it. And that's where it'll actually be easier in the long run for us. Alright, so line this up. We know we're going to be right there. So we'll bring that down and then mark it. So this gentleman wants sweat shield. It's not modified. And looking at it, there is no mounts for armor. But there is a looks like a decocker. Oh, all right. Anyways, so sweat shield is wanted. Come over. Now remember we're gonna right there. So we're gonna have to leave room for that. <clears throat> Come up and let's get a let's get an RMR. 
I lied, not an RMR. I meant let's get an MRD so we can see where that's going to go. So it's going to go roughly to there. So we will go right there. All right, that's within that. And we're going to have to drill those out as well. In hindsight, it's probably better for us to drill those out before this is riveted. So keep that in mind. I overlooked that. Um, but I'm probably going to go ahead and drill that since we have our design. And uh, this is actually work good for a two-piece if you do rivets here and then do the rivets here. And you could put them together with paracord or anything else. So that's actually, that'll work good as well. So then you have an MRD version. So I'll probably start offering those as well. But let's get this, um, let's get this cut. Let's get this drilled here, drilled here. And then we'll heat it up right here. And then boop, form it a little bit and see how that goes. All right, and with it cut and drilled, I'm going to go ahead and drill out the MRD. That way we can get our hardware in there. And then cut it so there's not as much uh, extra material. So let's get our hardware for that. Is quarter inch posts with uh, half inch screws. to put those in from the bottom all right and figure while we have it here I'm going to grab our Walther P99 mag I laser engraved it on there so I know what it's for and awesome so what I'll do is I'll go get the we're gonna want the set screw for this Grab the right Allen wrench. All right, and that's bullets facing, and that's bullets away. Awesome. So that looks great, and then this be right there just like that so let's get it going a little bit more so what we're gonna do from here is I'm gonna go ahead and shave right here so it's not that much wider and then I'll go ahead and clean up all the edges and I'll show you what I'll do next all right now I'm out the hardware after it's all cleaned up, otherwise and sanded and everything. Still got to do a final clean. Hit it inside and out. So far it's looking, looking real good. And we'll hit inside. So uh, what I do for this is these are one inch screws. That is not a one inch screw. All right, now that I got the right one, one inch screws, these are 3 16 and then these are eighth inch um, pass-throughs. So what we're gonna do is take your pass-throughs Stick them in Kydex, and then pile them on appropriately, and then get both your screws started. Square it up. Tighten it down. All right. Now we will need a flathead screwdriver that I misplaced. 
yet again. Here it is. Again, these are uh, four star products. These things are absolutely awesome. They are made for gunsmithing. I highly recommend them for this application. All right, let's get our bushings in here. And then we'll get our 316th going. There's one in. And then we'll get the other. Check fitment. That's nice. It's actually a little too tight. So let's back it off a C hair. We'll do it as a, a redhead C hair. They're a little bit thicker. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. All right, combined with that right there. Now uh, we still have to put this guy on, but I always do that last. So I'll go ahead, I'll set these aside, and let's go ahead and bend right there. And we're gonna heat up just under the uh, side channel. Be sure to do both sides. Last but not least, these are half inch, throw those on there, throw that guy right on top. If you look inside there's indentations and that indentation is actually where it'll sit on top of the uh, rivets. So it'll like self-center every time. Alright, throw some Loctite on there. some odd reason when they injection molded this they did it wrong we have to cut a small piece off the fit and it looks like FedEx is here woohoo where'd you go are you gonna back up I hear you I hear you there you are Yeah! I got 10 sheets of Kydex and a ton of hardware. All right. That's a beautiful sight. Gotta love FedEx. This is how it was delivered. <laughs> All the way through my floor. All right. I gotta say though, that's probably the easiest box to open. Cool, 10 sheets. And back at this, nut goes at the bottom. I personally put the smaller one on. 
screw it top. This goes with them, and there is the finished unit. Hell yeah. I like it. So, turns out this works great. So since this works good, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to offer these on my website for uh, 940, 357 SIG, 45, 10 millimeter, and single stacked uh, up to 45. It fits with nine, um, and it'll fit with others. So this will work perfectly. Uh, price is to be determined. Like I said, I was had an idea around like 35 bucks, 30, 35. So we'll see. It does take some time to do these. Uh, I'm going to make multiples at the same time now, so it's more cost effective. But these work great. I'm going to add some, and I just sent out a new product, 100% new, not even on the market. I'm super stoked about it, but that's where it's, I'm going to leave it because it's going to my buddy in the Air Force, and they're going to run pretty much drills with it and see how it performs, and if it's good, um, it'll be literally military tested, and uh, I'll be the only one on the market. So hopefully I can get patent pending for it, and uh, we'll see, um, but we'll go from there. I'm not going to go into details. But uh, it should be pretty cool. So I'll keep you posted on that and how that works. But for now, I got to laser this and send it out to the gentleman. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like the content. And uh, yeah.